The doctor or healthcare provider you choose for your PRP injection will directly affect your outcomes. And that's because not all physicians have the same level of training and expertise. So to help you make an informed decision, I'm going to discuss the key factors to consider when selecting who performs your PRP injection. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. The first key factor to consider is how the procedure is performed. Imaging guidance is essential for platelet-rich plasma injections. Regardless of how many years of experience your doctor has, even the most skilled and seasoned orthopedic providers can miss their injections. To illustrate my point, here is a comparison of accuracy for common injections using ultrasound-guided and landmark-based techniques. The data speaks for itself. Landmark-based accuracies often range in the low to mid-60s. Accuracy with ultrasound guidance is almost always guaranteed. The last thing you want to do is undergo a medical procedure only for your healthcare provider to do a landmark-based injection and then miss the target. Imaging guidance is even more important when it comes to PRP injections targeting soft tissue conditions such as partial tendon tears. Don't let anyone convince you that they can simply feel the problem area and then accurately inject the PRP into a tear. They don't have x-ray vision and they can't feel where a tear is. That's not how it works. Clinical trials demonstrate that imaging guidance results in superior outcomes. Researchers from this study performed ultrasound-guided tendon debridement followed by either PRP injections or a saline placebo. Remarkably, 87% of the PRP-treated group experienced a reduction in tear size by the six-month mark, with 79% achieving complete healing. On the other hand, the saline placebo group showed just 32% of tears decreasing in size, with only 21% reaching full healing. These results just aren't possible with the old school method of using landmark-based injection techniques. Make sure that you ask your healthcare provider if your procedure will be done with imaging guidance. If you get pushback, consider finding another provider who has the technical skills to ensure correct placement. The second thing you must ask your provider about is PRP platelet dosing. For several years, I've emphasized that platelet dosing is critical to achieving the best outcomes. Just like any other medication in medicine, PRP has a dose response curve. This means the higher the dose, the better the outcomes. And over the last year, there is now clear clinical trial evidence supporting this view. A recent clinical trial directly compared high-dose PRP to low-dose PRP for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. Group A received around 3 billion platelets per knee, while group B received nearly 6 billion platelets per knee. The results showed that group B, which received the higher dose, had better improvements in pain and function at both 3 months and 6 months compared to the lower dose group A. This study is particularly important because it is the first to prove that higher dose PRP is more effective than lower dose PRP for knee arthritis. This claim is further supported by a recent systematic review and meta-analysis that analyzed nearly 30 clinical trials studying the use of PRP for knee osteoarthritis. The analysis found that studies showing positive benefits had a mean platelet dose of around 5.5 billion platelets, whereas studies that found no benefit had a mean platelet dose of around 2 billion platelets. The authors concluded that a higher platelet dose likely results in improved clinical outcomes. So here's what you need to know. The dose of platelets you receive is directly correlated with how much blood is initially drawn and how much blood the PRP kit can process. Most commercial PRP kits can only process 10 to 20 cc's of blood, and this results in low to very low dose platelet-rich plasma. Better and newer kits can process 60 cc's or even 120 cc's of blood. So here's what I currently recommend for my patients and what you should ask your healthcare provider. For most soft tissue injections, such as those for ligaments and tendons, around 5 billion platelets are needed, which requires about a 30 cc blood draw. For large joints, such as those for knees and hip arthritis, 
around 10 billion platelets are needed, which requires about a 60 cc blood draw. It's essential to ask your healthcare provider how much blood will be drawn and how much blood the PRP kit they're using can process. The third factor to consider is your provider's qualifications. Choose an MD or DO physician rather than a nurse practitioner, physician assistant, chiropractor, or naturopath. This is critically important because with the rise of regenerative medicine clinics, many are using mid-level practitioners like physician assistants or nurse practitioners. While some of these practitioners are experts and clearly in the top 1% of all providers performing PRP injections, the reality is that most lack the specialized training and experience needed for PRP procedures. To make matters worse, not all MD or DO providers are the same either. I've heard of many chiropractic offices, physical therapy clinics, and naturopathic doctors hiring MDs and DOs to perform PRP or even stem cell injections and then splitting the income. However, these doctors often lack proper training as many are actually general practitioners looking to make extra income on the side. Unfortunately, many individuals are merely attempting to sell these treatments for financial gain. The reputable providers to look for are those who are board certified in sports medicine or have specialized training relevant to platelet-rich plasma. Many of these providers are affiliated with academic institutions and may serve as teaching faculty. An academic affiliation often means they have residents and fellows as learners, making them more likely to stay up to date with recent clinical trials and medical knowledge. While this is a generalization, it can be helpful in identifying a qualified treating provider. The last thing I want to do is provide you with some red flags to watch out for when choosing a PRP provider. First, lack of education and information. If your provider doesn't take the time to explain the procedure, outcomes, and recovery process, that's a significant red flag. You deserve thorough explanations and answers to all your questions. Second, pushing treatments on you. If you feel pressured to get a procedure without ample discussion or consideration of other options, that's a bad sign. Your health should be the priority, not their sales. Third, rushing through appointments. Quality care takes time. If your provider seems rushed, doesn't thoroughly discuss your medical history, or glosses over details, they might not be fully invested in your well-being. Fourth, counseling about outcomes. It's crucial to choose a doctor who provides thorough counseling on expected outcomes and the recovery process. Doctors who regularly perform PRP injections have a better understanding of what patients will experience week to week and can guide you more effectively. If your doctor can't clearly explain what to expect, that's a red flag indicating they might not have enough experience with these procedures. They should provide realistic outcomes, ideally quoting results from random control trials rather than relying solely on anecdotal success stories. Fifth, communication. You should feel comfortable reaching out with any questions or concerns before, during, and after your treatment and recovery. Avoid providers who are difficult to contact or who cannot communicate effectively. Sixth, unclear or misleading information. Be wary of providers with websites or consultations full of misinformation. Ensure their claims are backed by scientific evidence. Before we wrap up, I want to share a cautionary tale about medical tourism. While it might seem appealing due to lavish claims and lower costs, it comes with significant risks. Many patients who travel abroad for stem cell treatments often end up wasting their money and returning with serious complications such as infections. I had one patient in particular who traveled to Mexico to get an IV stem cell infusion followed by PRP and stem cell injections throughout his spine, hips, and knees. He developed an infection in his knee and was told by his treating provider that his was unrelated to the procedure. He then found himself unable to contact his doctors for further assistance. He had to return to the United States to receive IV antibiotics and after a prolonged recovery he was still worse off than where he started. And what about all these other people who post on social media saying they feel great and the best they've ever felt. It turns out that many of these foreign stem cell clinics administer IV dexamethasone along with the stem cell treatments. Dexamethasone is a corticosteroid and a potent anti-inflammatory and pain medication. So it's no wonder people
people feel great for a few days, but the effects wear off quickly once they return home. Ultimately, the promise of quick and cheap solutions abroad can often lead to more harm than good. It's crucial to weigh these risks carefully and prioritize your safety and well-being. I hope I've given you some useful information on how to pick a PRP specialist, but the next thing you need to know is that not all PRP is the same and there are many factors that can affect outcomes. That's why I created the next video which provides in-depth knowledge to help you make an informed decision about proceeding with PRP injections.